What's up guys, Grim here. If you left a comment in the comment section of the last weekend video that we did, then you are eligible for the giveaway of a 30 day patron pass. And the winner of that is right there. Congratulations, we'll be sending the code to you in your YouTube inbox, so make sure to check out there. This week, we're gonna be giving away a fifth anniversary Arclight Rider. So if you'd like to win this awesome mount, all you have to do is leave a comment in the comment section below this video with your character name and server. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and punch that like button. The winner will be announced in the next weekend video. And now we have to announce the winners of the Patreon giveaway. If you're somebody that has supported the channel with a, even a one dollar donation last month through the patreon link in the description below this video then you are eligible for these big prizes and we're giving away two of the 30-day patron passes a fifth anniversary arc light rider and a fifth anniversary snail mount so if you actually donate a dollar you are eligible for this and the winners are right there congratulations to everybody thank you so much for supporting the channel and helping me do what i do all right so this month if you donate a dollar, even as low as a dollar to the Patreon page to support the channel, I am going to enter you into the giveaway of a Razer Death Adder mouse. And yes, we will send this to your house no matter where you are in the world. I don't care where you live. You could be living in, uh, you know, uh, a remote place in Africa and we will send it to you so all you have to do is go to the patreon page below my uh in the description below this video should i say and go ahead and throw a dollar towards the channel and help support it and you will be eligible for this giveaway so good luck to everybody What's up guys Grim here I apologize for not making a video over about a week's time now because I've been sick unfortunately but hopefully I can make it up to you guys in the upcoming uh, weeks because I got tons of ideas for videos right now and hopefully they will be very good videos that you guys will enjoy so to make a video for this weekend I am wanting to talk about Devillion now this is the game that I've I've been on a craze for just recently I mean I get in these moods with games like where I have my main games like Rift and stuff like that then I get other games that I play on the side but then I'll get real hooked on them at times and it's real healthy to have different games that you play if you're a big time gamer because that makes it to where you don't get burned out on your main games and stuff like that well I started playing Devillion and uh, I, I've played it over the course of quite a bit of time now you know ever since it came out but <laughs> Lately, it's been hardcore into it because it has just captured my attention and I'm having a blast with it. All right, so I want to do a complete overview of this and give you guys an idea of what the game is, uh, what is good about it, what is bad about it, and all the other stuff. And hopefully this will be a very honest review for you guys to enjoy. All right, to start off with, there are five classes in Devillion right now. There is the Berserker, which is like a tanky warrior. Uh, it can be taken into a DPS role and stuff like that, but really it's not very good at DPS. It's it's mainly the tank of the game and it's very good then you have the cannoneer and the cannoneer is a ranged dps class and it has extremely high dps many consider it the best dps in the game right now so if you're looking for a damaging spec cannoneer is really good and also just like most games range classes kind of have an advantage with things and it's it's not any different in Devillion. if you play a range class you're most likely going to be able to stay away from most of the monsters damage and stand back and take pop shots at them and if a if a berserker is up there taking all the damage he's got to worry about dodging all the attacks mostly there is ranged attacks that monsters do they like to throw aoe's out at the range classes and stuff like that so you have to do a little bit of dodging no matter what so so uh, get ready for that but it's not going to be nearly as bad as the melee classes um, 
Then you have the Evoker. Now this is the class that I have right now. Uh, this is basically the magic caster of them all. It's a ranged DPS class once again. It has lots of control aspects to it. Lots of things that will cast ice and freeze down the opponents, knock them down, things like that. And it's, it's really good for control and really good DPS. It's one of the superior classes in PvP as well. Now all classes can be taken into a good way in PvP, uh, player versus player combat, but uh, naturally some of them are going to be considered more powerful than others. Uh, but a lot of it depends on how you're playing the class and such. Uh, the way that you spec out your character with its skills and stuff plays a huge part in how good you're going to do in PvP, you know, as well as PvE, but really, really important in PvP. Uh, that makes or break it uh basically if you go out with a bad spec you're going to die instantly whereas in pve you you're still going to have a chance it's just uh you might not do optimal dps or tanking or whatever all right then you have the third soul here is the shadow hunter now this is a melee dps uh role and it's very very good in uh being elusive with things it has a lot of ways to get away and port and stuff like that so if you're somebody that likes kind of a roguish class and stuff like that shadow hunter is very very good uh because it's going to do a lot of damage and be very very fun in pvp aspects because you're going to be able to warp around and get to your enemies a lot easier than a lot of the other uh classes can be able to do it so DPS class on Shadow Hunter at melee range. And then we have uh, the Tempest class. This is the brand new class that they just came out with. And they made it to where it's pretty, uh, I guess, versatile. It's able to be uh, done at melee range or else at range. Uh, the at ranged uh, because basically there are two different aspects to it there is it's mainly a melee class don't get me wrong on that but it has two different aspects which they call stances uh, which you guys are probably familiar with from other games such as like in World of Warcraft you have stances of a warrior and stuff like that that goes into a battle stance and all that well this has stances where it has a weapon that is a glaive and it's a very large pole arm and able to uh, get very good range with your attacks but it can switch to a dagger spec which will basically break apart the glaives and use them as two smaller weapons and it's high dps whenever in the uh the dagger form but if you go to the other stance which is the glaive uh stance it will have very good tanking uh not really really good tanking it's not going to be anywhere near like a berserker but it is going to allow you to do a lot of uh, trash mob clearing because it's got a lot of aoe in the glaive spec and it's mainly single target damage as the dagger spec so uh but it's not a very tanky class now keep that in mind and it also has it to where whenever you switch back and forth between the two stances it's going to give you boosts uh such as if you go from one to the other it will give a movement boost uh, to where you'll move faster and if you go from the uh, the other back to the first it will actually give you a defensive boost all right so uh let's see what's the other one that we're looking for here uh do we go over all of them yeah i think we went over all of them so that's the main classes right there that you can play and uh, each of them are very fun in their own way so i highly recommend you if you're just starting the game to try out each one of them and see which play style that you like the most because uh i know i started out as a berserker and i was up there taking all the damage and stuff and my gear was really bad and it felt like i was just getting punished the entire time whereas you know once a berserker gets really good gear it's you know a, a night and day kind of uh change to where all of a sudden you're taking all this damage and you can dish it out and all that stuff and it doesn't feel so weak uh, but if you're playing something like a cannoneer or a voker, it's pretty much never going to feel weak because you get to stand back and take all the shots that you want. As long as you're not getting hit, you're not going to feel weak. Whereas a berserker can't really avoid that. It's got to take the damage. It's in melee range and stuff like that. So try out each one of them, see which one works best for you and, uh, go with it. 
Okay, so the basis of this game is it's an action RPG. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the Diablo type of gameplay and stuff like that, you will know exactly where this is coming from. It's it's kind of a top-down view of your character. And uh, this the difference between this game and Diablo is this one is a lot more faster paced and also a, a bit more advanced in uh how you play stuff so take for instance if you play like um a, a league of legends or something like that you have like three or four abilities or something but then if you go to world of warcraft you got three different action bars full of abilities that you can use you know it's it's so much more complicated you know this their strategy in both games don't get me wrong on that but whenever it comes to managing 20 different abilities versus three or four uh it's it's quite a bit of a difference in the gameplay style so this is a bit more of the touching on the world of warcraft side of it as in lots of abilities if you want them you can actually build your character how you like uh we'll go ahead and pop up the skill menu here and uh go to any skills that you want you have three different schools of uh skills that you can pick and you can mix and match them as you can see i went into control some on my evoker here all the way up to meteor strike and then i went down into burst and went all the way up to starfall i did not put any points into assault so this makes it to where you know i can play my class in whichever play style i would like i'm not really focusing on one big attack with this particular build it's more of a kiting build that i'm going to constantly be running away from the enemies and throwing down fields behind me like ice fields and meteor strikes and all that stuff while i'm running away so if that's my play style, I can actually build my character around that way instead of just being stuck with three or four abilities that I have to play just like everybody else. And all the classes can do stuff like that. They can all mix and match like that. Okay, so the next thing that we need to talk about is basically what the entire game is revolved around as in what makes it unique in uh, a bigger aspect and that is the devilian uh, part of it you're basically half devil half human so if you uh it, it, while you're playing the game you will notice that you have a middle bar right here called the awakening bar i think that's what it's called devilian awakening bar but as it fills up and starts to glow it will allow you to transform into a devil form and once you turn into this devil form you're going to have all new abilities and it is going to be very few abilities as in like four abilities that you're going to be able to use and they're presets so it, it, it kind of goes back to the aspect of uh, making it very basic and the amount of abilities that you have to use versus having a lot of them so if i turn into my devilian form and this bar will power up the more monsters that i kill i'll go ahead and transform and as you can see my abilities down here on my bar changed and it turned into ones that's going to be much much more powerful than my initial uh abilities but as you can see, this bar runs down, and once it runs out, I will turn into my normal form once again. Now, this is really, really cool because it's basically going into your Super Saiyan form. And, uh, yeah, as soon as you turn into your Devillian form, it, it throws a knockdown to everything around you. All the monsters fall down, and it's really, really cool whenever you go into the awakening phase of this. So, uh, that's kind of what is really the selling point that goes between this game and a lot of other games is you know the devilian form and stuff like that now uh how hard is this game to play versus how easy it is uh it can be taken in two different ways as in you can go with very few abilities or else you can go with lots of abilities a lot of times that makes it much more difficult naturally if you go into pvp uh if you want to do mainly pvp on this game you want to try to limit the amount of abilities that you're going to be using because like most games pvp gets more chaotic and stuff like that so uh naturally you want to go with you know three or four abilities maybe a little bit more or something like that but you definitely don't want to go with two full 
you know, uh, action bars full of abilities and trying to manage everything while also focusing on uh, trying to move away from your enemies, you know, uh, do all the stuff that is usually as chaotic as it is in PvP formats. Uh, in PvE, you can go with uh, lots of different abilities and it's basically the, the a little bit mindless rotations. Uh, as in, you know, I can throw down a field, throw down another field, throw down another field, meteor, you know, all these abilities is just stacking on top of each other and it's basic rotations. Uh, it, it's very good for people with uh, like that like to memorize you know one button two button three button you know that kind of thing uh, whereas PvP is of course much more chaotic and you can't do it in that format uh, so if uh, if you're wondering how hard the game is uh, like I said it will be pretty easy early on like most games as it goes along uh the monsters will get more complicated as in they will start to stun you and stuff and knock you down and uh that makes it to where it takes the game to a whole nother level once you get max level on here and at the time of this video it's level 54 and they seem to be releasing the new expansions and stuff i mean not really expansions but updates to the game to where it increases the skill cap by two each time so uh it went up to 52 and now up to 54 and 56 looks like the next one that's coming up and it's they're basically making it like an end game each time the new uh, the two uh, levels go up as in there's new gear sets to get at level 56 once it comes out there will be new dungeons that everybody needs to do and it's a it's a format that allows them to stretch out the game without having to uh, rely on like these big releases that sometimes people smash through really fast so all of a sudden now you're getting like two extra levels comes up you know every six months or whatever and then the or less i don't know uh, exactly the time release on it but basically they can up the levels by two add a couple new dungeons that are real difficult add new gear and all of a sudden you have a completely new in game now whether this is a good format or not i'm not too sure it seems to be really convenient for developers but uh as far as the players, you know, not too much content comes out at one time, so it never feels like a big expansion or something. Uh, but it is something to work towards. Uh, the game is very, very grindy, though. Uh, if you do not like doing dungeons, there are other things to do, but whatever you're going to do, you're going to have to grind through it. Uh, take, for instance, if I wanted to uh, all of a sudden queue up for one of these dungeons or something, you better believe that I'm going to have to run that dungeon countless amounts of times and uh, try to get gear and all that. They have other aspects to the game rather than just dungeons. And that is stuff like uh, the Arch Devil or Arc Devil, whichever way that you're supposed to say it. Uh, these are more difficult dungeons. Uh, and they like to release one of these every time that, you know, they have a big expansion or something like that. Uh, like a new update that they're really trying to push. Because these are like a big selling point, as in, uh, you know, this is the big difficult dungeon that you can go to. Uh, then they had the Infinite Hunting Grounds. And if you guys have ever played Rift, you know about the Instant Adventures. And this is kind of like that. Uh, although on the North American servers, uh, this does not seem to draw in a lot of players. Even though the rewards and stuff are pretty good, it's still not something that you're going to go to and you're going to see a bunch of other players that it's going to be there with you uh whether that's just an aspect of the game not having a huge population or not i'm not real sure uh but the rewards for this are pretty good because there's ways to stack rewards and i'll show you guys all about that in a moment but this is you know it's worth doing but you're not going to have a bunch of other players there with you unless you invite them yourself um then you have the raid dungeon. Now, the, the big one right now is the Tower of No Return. I haven't done the raiding because obviously you can see that it's grayed out for me. As in, my character does not have the item level for it just yet. But uh, from what I can tell uh, from the raiding aspect is uh, it's 
it's a, a lot like the other dungeons and stuff, but just a little more difficult. As in, the damage is going to be higher. You're going to need to have lots of ranged DPS with one or two tanks in the middle uh, doing all the tanking. And there's not really a healing aspect to this game. So you don't really have clerics and stuff like that that's going to be healing all your party. As an evoker, I do have a heal that I can use. If I throw it down, it throws down a field there, and that allows all the players standing in it to get healed up. And that's kind of one of the main ways to heal up in the game if you have an evoker around, or else you can use potions. And uh, most other people, uh, like berserkers and stuff like that, have abilities that allow them to heal up with their attacks. So uh, there's not really healing classes right now, but there are ways to heal up. So that's kind of interesting as in taking it in a whole different format. Uh, now, uh, the, the game is very, very fun overall as in uh, you're going to do lots of cool stuff in it. There's devil hunts that you do in order to get better gear for your Davillion form. Uh, if you look at my character here, you will see that uh, my gear and stuff is, uh, you know, pretty normal as in you attach earrings, uh, necklaces, armor, weapon, all that good stuff. Then you have a few cosmetic things down here. And since I'm thinking about the cosmetic things, I have to say that it's a little bit disappointing. As in, if you get uh, a piece of armor that you think looks really cool on your character, I don't believe that you can put it down here to where you can always have that look. There's not really a transmog or anything like that in this game. Uh, there are costumes and stuff that you can buy uh, there might be other ways to earn them in the game, such as through uh, like any kind of currencies or something like that. But overall, you know, I found armor sets that I would really like to have on my character, and they will not equip down here. Mostly the costumes and stuff are obtained through the, the marketplace, as in the, uh, the, the credit shop, where you're going to spend real life money on credits in order to get items. Um, but then you have your Davillion form here. This is all different gear. So you have to get gear for your Davillion form and gear for your uh, main class form. Now the Davillion form way of getting gear is pretty much much it's a lot different than the class way of getting gear because you'll be grinding dungeons for this regular uh gear or else other ways and then there's like devil hunts and pvp that you get your devillion gear from so it's two different ways of getting it uh there are uh gear sets that you can buy with pvp currencies uh that will apply to pve but they're not as good as, say, like the in-game stuff in the, uh, like the slaughter gear is the best gear in the game right now. And the best gear that you can get in PvP is this stuff right here, which is not as good as slaughter. Uh, as you can see, this piece of gear right here that you can get through PvP, it has an item level of 79, whereas the slaughter slip that I have right now is item level 83. So it's a four item level difference. So, yeah. Uh, the, to uh, talk about the PvP a little bit, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, the PvP is normalized, as in whenever you go into it, the gear that you have will be basically uh, normalized with everybody else, as in they will not have better gear than you. However, there are things that make a difference in PvP that give veteran players an advantage. Uh, just for an example, uh, we'll uh, touch on this in just a moment, but there are talismans that you can have that will uh, actually give it, give you extra stats. Say uh, like this one here gives me 12 additional damage. This right here gives me more a, a magic attack and stuff like that. Talismans and certain other things do transfer over into PvP and give you an advantage. So if you ever go into PvP in this game and somebody goes, gear is normalized, you died because you are terrible at the game. No, no. There, there are things that transfer over into PvP that do make a big difference. Uh, but you can go into PvP and have a chance though, as in you're not going to just be completely completely slaughtered the entire time because you don't have the gear uh, because the gear is going to be normalized uh, as in you're not going to have like a tenth of the hit points as somebody else that's in PvP. 
All right, so uh, I was going to touch on how uh, the the uh, quests and stuff work. There are daily quests that you can do here, and Davillion makes it real convenient, as in where they make it to where you can see your daily quests, like right here. If I want to do a dungeon crawl and queue, uh, accept one of these quests, I can do, take for instance, level 54 Arc Devil dungeon, and I can accept the quest where whenever I do it, I will actually get these additional rewards on top of the normal loot that I get from the dungeon. But of course, this can only be done once a day. It's a daily. So that makes it to where you can stack rewards because say I do this Arc Devil dungeon, well, I can also pick up another quest from the cooperation uh drop down here i can go to like the arc devil dungeon here and pick up this quest as well and it makes it to where whenever i help out somebody that is weaker than me in this arc devil dungeon i can get this reward too so i can accept this one and also the level 52 arc devil dungeon quest from the uh from the dungeon crawl one and that makes it to where i can stack rewards so i'm not only getting the loot from the dungeon i'm also getting the loot from these uh additional quests right here so it makes it really really nice to be able to stack bunch uh, a bunch of different quests get tons of rewards and try to uh, get the most reward for your effort so to say now that is also a downside to the game as in they do not really tell you which quest to accept you do not go into arc devil dungeon and automatically get these quests so that you can get the bonus rewards you got to be somebody that knows exactly which quest to pick up and early on in the game before you know all this stuff it it is really a bad thing as in you know you do all these dungeons and then you realize i i didn't get all the rewards that i could have been getting this is terrible and it, it kind of bothers you quite a bit because you put all the uh, work into it and you don't get all the rewards because a veteran player knew what they were doing and you didn't so that really sucks in aspect but to uh, go ahead and go more into this, you will see that it also has a daily login uh, calendar here. Now, as you accrue points with this daily login, you will be able to get rewards over here. Now, there are two different levels of uh, rewards here. There is the normal rewards, and then there are the patron rewards. Uh, patron is basically a subscription to the game, and it's like... Uh, let's see uh let's look at the exact price here i believe it's um what is it 15 dollars uh, a month uh yeah i believe that's what it is 15 dollars a month but uh basically the patron uh, now I'll, I'll go ahead and call it patron i'm saying uh meaning subscription to the game is that uh it gives you lots of rewards that are normally not gotten in the game, such as you will have, uh, right here is all the list. You see that it says uh, XP and Devil Souls rewards is plus 25%. Devil Souls is basically whenever you kill something uh, in your Davillion form, you will absorb its souls, and that makes you level up in your Davillion form. Your Davillion form has a different level than your normal form. Uh, you can also do five times uh, plus five more daily quests. If you look at my daily quests up here at the top, it says that I have 19 of 20 remaining. Uh, I guess a free to play player would only have 15 that they can do. Uh, the daily abyssal tower entries are plus one. Uh, there is a uh, basically a layered tower dungeon that you could go into and uh it gives you like a unique currency that allows you to buy gear and stuff like that and also it gives you tons of uh experience in it if you go to this uh this abyssal tower uh it will level you up very very fast however you can only go into it once and you can only do one floor for each entry that you go into it with a patron uh status you can actually go into it twice so you can do two different floors uh the floors are basically 10 levels so to say so uh like if you go into the the level three or the floor three should i say it will have uh the floors you know i guess 21 22 23 24 25 26 all the way up to 30 and then once you go up to the next layer it will have the next 10 floors 
Uh, it's kind of confusing on how exactly it's done, but you can imagine every entry will allow you to do 10 different mobs of monsters because whenever you go into it, it basically spawns a bunch of monsters and then you got to kill them all and then you go to the portal and go to the next one and the next one all the way up to the 10 that you're allotted for that day. Uh, if you're a patron, of course, you can go in twice and do 20 different uh, of the levels. But uh, the rewards are really good. The the currency that you get can actually gear out your character pretty good for your levels. Uh, even at my level, as in uh, level 54, I have several pieces of gear that I got from the Abyssal Tower currency. So it's very, very useful. It's much better than the gear I was wearing before. Um, and uh, trust me, if you're wanting to level up, the Abyssal Tower is the way to do it. As in, you know, make sure you do it every day that you can. All right, so then you get the login points uh, is up by one with patron status. So uh, it, it normally you would only get two points a day and I get three points instead. Uh, let's see, additional attendance reward choice. Uh, of course, that is the second layer over here that I showed you. Uh, and the, the the rewards are much better on the patron side than over there on the other side. Although the rewards on the free to play are very very good, so don't don't get me wrong on that. Like take for instance this Alara's blessing is a huge thing. I mean it gives you two hours of increased experience and all that other stuff. So that's that's great for leveling up. Uh, and also the dungeon bounty here. This is something that you normally always want to have whenever you go into dungeons. It gives you increased gold, increased experience, all this stuff. And you'll get these rewards uh, kind of passively in the game as well. So uh, you want to build up as many charges as this. As you can see, I have like 83 charges. So that means I can do 83 dungeons with this bonus. And I'll be getting more of these bonuses too. I'll show you exa uh, exactly how I do that. So, and also these uh, tiers here, this is uh, used to upgrade your artifacts, which we'll go over that as well. So, uh, we got a lot of things to touch up on here. All right, so then you also get a marketplace discount. You get uh, uh, an exclusive patron shop, which you can spend uh, an additional currency. Uh, whenever you're a patron to the game, you get another currency, and you can actually get gear and keys and lock boxes and all kinds of different rewards with it. So that's basically the list of patron benefits, but it goes more than that. Uh, as in, they are adding stuff all the time to patron status. So if you're thinking about is this game played, uh, play to win or else pay to win or buy to win, this game is definitely not uh, uh, pay to win, but there are so many benefits bonuses for being a patron to this game it's almost ridiculous not to have a patron status uh they add stuff all the time one of the newest things that they added just for uh at the time of this video is they added these red eye rewards and basically if you look up here at the top right where you see uh hopefully you can see my mouse up here every 30 minutes it's going to give me a different reward up to i think it's like five or six different rewards so if you're just playing the game for a bunch today or you can just let your character stand idle you don't really get logged out in this game so i can just stand here go eat go hang out with the family whatever i want to do and come back and i will have this next reward ready to claim and then once i claim it it will go into the 30 minute countdown to give me the next reward and the rewards here are very very good you get the the potions that I was just talking about where it gives you uh, uh, the XP bonus in dungeons and stuff where I said I ate 83 charges of it there are lots of other things it even gives you a currency to get some of the in-game gear uh, if we go over to the uh, vendor right up here you will see that I can get some of the currencies to get a few of the pieces of gear that are considered the in-game gear right now. It does not give me access to all of the in-game gear, as in I can't get the weapon here, I can't get like the main chest piece or anything like that. But this is a huge, huge thing for my character to get. So if I'm passively getting uh, like a bit of the currency, I get like... I think like five of them a day or eight of them. I think it's kind of random exactly how many you get. But um, yeah, if I'm getting like eight of them a day or something like that and it takes 40, 
within you know a week's time or so i'm going to have enough to where i can actually buy a piece of the in-game gear so that's really really nice uh people can get it through rating and uh stuff like that so it's not like it's uh it's almost leveling the playing field a little bit as in the raiders don't have everything and you have nothing kind of thing uh which is uh very apparent in lots of other games it always sucks whenever you play a game you see the raiders are the only ones that can do most of the game and you're you're a casual you only get to play a little bit every day or else you know on the weekends or stuff like that and you're not getting to play 50 percent of the game it seems like because the raiders are the only ones that can do that content with their gear so that makes it uh, really really nice to be able to get some of the in-game gear but that is obtained through having a patron status and so that's another benefit of being a patron uh, there are just tons and tons of benefits of being a patron I can't go over that enough uh, so if you're wanting to spend money on the game I highly re uh, recommend you just get a patron status and if you want to uh, buy anything after that that's up to you but uh, there are bad things to buy and then there's good things to buy so yeah the the patron status is worth it but uh lots of other things aren't we'll go over that uh, shortly too okay so there's other things that you need to level up in the game besides uh just your character and stuff like that there are uh let's look at this first we have artifacts now if we look at like uh, take for instance on my boots here you will see to the right of it it says artifact alon's wits plus two Whenever you're playing the game, you will get different things in the game that will allow you to level up your artifact here. And the higher the artifact is, the more stats it's going to have, as in this artifact gives me evasion. And if I actually level it up more, I will get more and more evasion to where it's going to make a huge difference on my character. Uh, especially on like a weapon or something. If we look at my weapon, you see the artifact here is a plus three artifact, and it gives me 500. 76 magic attack that is a big boost to my attack so uh, I want to be able to get the gems in the game that's going to actually level up my artifact and give me lots more stats so that's another thing that you're going to be working on while you're playing the game uh, another thing that people level up and work on is talismans and I touched on this a little bit earlier but really the talismans are uh, very 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 powerful to say the least because they not only transfer over into PvP and stuff, but they're also extremely important in PvE content. Uh, it, whenever you open, uh, you will be getting, uh, uh, let's see here, do I have any? Uh, let's go ahead and craft one so you guys can see it. But basically we have talisman boxes here and we can craft it right here uh, to show you guys exactly what this is. Uh, whenever you break down gear from dungeons that you don't need uh, and you're not wanting to sell it, you can break it down and it will give you this magic dust. And as you get the magic dust, you can craft talisman boxes. And then once you do, you can open them up and the RNG gods will start playing a factor in this. So as you can see, I got two different artifacts here, or talismans, should I say. And it's both of them are two stars, so that makes them a green uh, artifact. As you can see, the name at the top and also at the bottom of the thumbnail, basically, is green. So that means that it's a very basic uh, talisman, as in it's not a real good one. But as what you do in order to level these things up, as in if I have a two star right here, I can go down to combine and click on that. And then I can take this uh, level nine talisman with two stars and I can put other talismans right below it to make it where it will consume these talismans down below and uh, up its experience and if you look up at the top here it says level 9 uh, XP 100 well it will go up to XP 300 if I throw these two talismans and let them uh, be consumed by this so that makes it to where you can level up the talismans however you do not have to worry about leveling up this talisman and then all of a sudden getting a new talisman and all the work that you did on this one is wasted because uh, you can actually take this talisman and feed it to the next one and all the experience that you put into this one will actually go to the new one. So that makes it really, really nice. If you get really lucky with one of the 
the talisman boxes and get a nice uh, talisman out of it, such as you can see right here. I got a five-star one at one point, which makes it a legendary talisman. And uh, I took my previous magic defense one and just let this one consume it, and that leveled it up really nicely. So you don't have to worry about all of your work being wasted. All right, so that's a lot of the aspects of the game right there. Um, the the gameplay is very fast play, uh, fast paced, should I say, compared to like a Diablo. Uh, on a Diablo, you basically cast a spell, you cast a spell, you cast a spell. Whereas on Davillion, it's kind of like spell, 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 spell. You can do lots of different things like that. Uh, you can play it exactly how you want and stuff like that. But it's uh, not exactly a slow pace. There are a couple other aspects of the game. And these are a little bit of the downsides that I was talking about. That I feel like everybody needs to know in order to accurately get a representation of what the game is. Um... As I said, all the things before were uh, mostly all positive, as in there's tons and tons of fun to be had in this game. Uh, but there is a gender lock on your characters. If that is a sticking point for you, then it's something that you need to know. As in, if you want to play an evoker class, you have to be a female character. You cannot play a male character. If you want to be a cannoneer, you have to be a female character. And kind of, it's just kind of the way that it is. Uh, and uh, every new class is probably going to be gender locked it's a real common thing for asian games to be like this um so you can't really knock it too much it's just the choice that they make as in they believe that uh instead of investing all uh, like a lot of development time in making a new model for the uh evoker a male model uh all the new costumes that you have to have for male characters uh the voice actors all that stuff they feel like instead they can just come out with this class a lot earlier and move on to the next class and come out with new content and all that rather Rather than having to basically remake the character twice over so it's a it's a choice that they make and that's uh it, it flows over into Davillion here so keep that in mind another thing is is that if you're a uh, European or U US player you have to realize that Tryon is not the main creator of this game uh, some people really enjoy Tryon's work some people don't but Really, Tryon is just behind the publishing of the game, as in, they control this, right here. You know, the credit stuff. If you don't ever plan on paying for anything, pretty much Tryon has nothing to do with you for the most part. Uh, they do the translation of the game and all that, but the entire game is really made by Blue Hole Studios over in Asia. Uh, it's actually a sub company of it called Blue Hole Geno, but uh, that that that's a, a negative in my part. As in, you know, some of you guys might not want like try on making the game, and some of you guys might, but it, it's a whole different company that's making it, and there's a communication between the two companies that always has to go on in order for anything to be done in this game. As in, uh, take for instance, if you see that this particular skill is not firing off the way that it should be, and you report it to Tryon, they say, okay, we acknowledge that it's not working right. We will get a hold of Blue Hole Geno and tell them about it, and hopefully it will get fixed. You know, uh, it, that's kind of how it goes. Like w whenever you have two separate companies that it's a communication between them. And also one of them is a, uh, a foreign language to what Tryon is speaking. It's really hard to communicate exactly what all is going on. And, uh, also the, uh, the, uh, viewpoint of the Asian player market may be completely different than the North American market. As in, uh, Asian players are very renowned for being able to grind content. And so that makes it really good for a game like this. Uh, but uh, the Asian market may be catering around grinding because that's what the Asian players like to do. Whereas the North American players might not like grinding the content over and over and over, but yet Blue Hole Geno might not want to change it to what it is for the North American market. It's always their choice. It's not Tron's choice at all. So, uh, 
something that may be real agonizing in the game, as in you don't like this aspect of it, and nobody else in North America does either for the most part, it may never change because Blue Hole Geno is an Asian company that sees it as from an Asian company's viewpoint, as in the grindy stuff is good. You know, our players love it. Uh, but Tri might be telling them, no, the North American population does not like it. Well, I don't know if we want to change it kind of thing. So there are things like that that will frustrate you whenever you get real hardcore into the game at some point. Or if you play it as a main game, as in, you know, the, the changes to the game will really affect you. If it's like a secondary game to you that you're not real worried about it, a lot of these things won't bother you too much. And if you don't like it enough, you'll probably just quit. But if you invest a lot of time into this game and consider it your main game, those little changes like that will affect affect you and bother you quite a bit most likely so uh, to take for instance just recently I was live streaming Davillion and uh, one of the you know head producers of the game Drucifer came to my live stream and seen me playing Berserker and I said man one of the worst things about playing this class is I have an ability that attacks everything around me but it also heals me for every single enemy hit but yet, whenever I go to cast it, a lot of times monsters will knock me back or stun me or something like that. And it will use up my skill, but it won't do it in the game to where it heals me. And I actually time that skill around keeping my character alive. As in, I wait until I'm low in health, I pop that ability, hit everything around me, and it heals me up completely almost. And that's a big part of staying alive as a berserker. Well, he said he says, you know, for it to use up the ability and not allow you to use it uh, immediately afterwards. Like if you get stunned and you don't use the ability, okay, but for it to actually put you on cooldown, but yet not use it in the game, he said it's not supposed to be interruptible. So uh, they're going to report it to Blue Hole Geno, and uh, hopefully it'll get fixed. Well, it's been months now, and that has not been fixed. So who knows we'll have to see how that goes but that's just some of the stuff that goes on in this game that will frustrate you but overall this game is very very addictive it's very very fun there's lots of different things to do on here there's crafting aspects there's a marketplace uh, as in you can uh, auction off your items you can play the auction uh, there's so many different items in the game for you to level up such as your artifacts your talismans uh, and things like that there's just so many fun things to do but it's a lot of grind no matter what you think of it it's it's always going to be a grind so I hope you guys enjoyed this video this is my honest review of Davillion uh, like I said I have been hooked on it lately I have been having such a blast playing this game and uh, that should tell you enough that it there's lots of fun things to do. I'm mainly doing the PvP because I love the PvP. Uh, but I'm always a PvP player in every game that I do. But there are lots of other aspects in this game that will make it fun for you. So play. See what you like. It's free to play. You don't have to buy anything from the market. Uh, if you do end up spending some money, it will actually uh, be best to get a patron status and also possibly the Nana's pet so it will pick up all the stuff behind you. Also, there are a few locks uh, if you have never spent anything on the game, as in to avoid uh, gold sellers and all that other stuff. They make it where there are restrictions such as you can't whisper to other players. Uh, like the the trading is limited like people can't trade with you and stuff like that if you have never spent any money on the game because uh, of course if they allow you to exchange things uh, with fresh accounts and all that it will allow you to uh, be susceptible to gold farmers and all that so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is my absolute honest review of the Davillion game uh, very very fun some downsides I don't deny that one bit, but I highly suggest you give it a try, see how it is for you, and I hope you enjoyed it.